So let's take a look at some rather spectacular 3D printed designs from across the community. We've got some tech elves by Edge Miniatures, some sinister killer robots and the Dark Machinists, and some more very holy battle sisters. Let's take a look at some really cool army rangers for all of your alternative grimdark wargaming needs. Hello and welcome back to All Specs Tactics, where today it's time for the remake of a video I've been looking forward to getting round to for a long time, showcasing a whole bunch of 3D printed proxy armies, and taking a look at some really cool miniature designs, but this time trying to get the video done right. With the rise of 3D printing over the past few years, there's certainly been a massive explosion of designs from the sort of cottage industry, of alternative designs for all sorts of game systems out there. Well, I feel like it's not exactly an overall threat or anything to the mainline providers of miniature war games. It really does mean that people do have some alternatives if they want to, potentially saving quite a lot of money versus certain suppliers' kits, and of course just having a massive wealth of cool designs with different theming and styling, rather than being locked into just what's available. 3D printing, I think, isn't literally for everyone, but can be a good pathway to get collectors out there to get cool designs and miniatures for hobby projects and get something pretty unique looking on the table. As a result, there's absolutely tons of creators out there these days making their own takes on common sci-fi tropes that could be used in various different war games. And in this video, I thought I'd take a look at a good bunch of models that might interest you guys on this channel. Just for a bit of context, this one's a remake of a version of this video that I did a few months back that was very swiftly taken down by myself. It was maybe just a little bit naive, deciding to showcase a whole load of 3D printed designs from across the community, something that I knew that people would be interested in, and the video did gain a lot of attention for the few minutes it was up. Though I think I hadn't really appreciated the damage that could be done by overexposing certain model makers, who might be operating in a bit more of a grey area, and don't really want a spotlight shot on their miniatures for IP sort of purposes. My logic with that one still really is that if I or anyone else can find these designs with really simple Google searches, it is just kind of unrealistic to think that any other big war game company with a legal department couldn't find these, so I wasn't really totally convinced that I was doing that much damage in the first place. Plus it's not like these people haven't showcased their designs on the wider internet for all to see, and generally might be helped out by a few more people finding their models. In theory they should also have nothing to fear, provided they have stuck to more generic sci-fi sort of tropes, as opposed to just trying to market things under any individual company's IP. Still though, I did learn lessons from that. I can see how it could get some creators into hot water, maybe having more attention that they really want, particularly if they maybe are operating in the more grey area, where cease and desist letters were a real threat. Even if they were unjustified, they might just not have the resources to fight them. That was the reason the last one got deleted in short order. And basically the general feedback from the community was try and do that, but actually reach out to the people who want to be showcased first, and make sure they actually want the extra attention, and are happy that their designs are safe from retribution. Overall, that's basically what I've tried to do this time. This time, every content creator that I've featured in this one has been contacted to ask if they'd like to have their model designs showcased, and I have only chosen to include people who clearly wanted extra visibility for their miniatures, and trying to abide by any guidelines that they set out for me. Besides the smaller creators that I've talked to, I've also chosen to include one-page rules as well, who I'm absolutely comfortable are one of the major players in the entire sector. They're making their own miniatures for their own miniature game, Grimdark Future. I'm confident are well known enough not to have any sort of worries from overexposure. Basically put simply for this one, all creators featured here are happy to have their miniatures shown off in this specific video. Any that were unsure or didn't respond have just got left out. I want to err on the side of caution. And if any people do change their mind at any point, then just contact me. I can clip out the relevant section of the video. So if anything does disappear from here, that's why. The creators I'm showcasing are all happy that their designs are suitably generic sci-fi tropes that no one company has exclusive rights to. Finally, before we get into the showcase proper, I thought I'd just talk about today's video sponsor, which is Elegoo 3D Printers. They sponsored this video by sending me one. Really quite a fancy new latest design one as well in the Saturn IV Ultra, so thank you very much for that, and also for being kind of patient as this video was supposed to come out several weeks back but kept on getting pushed back by other news. It was definitely good to have motivation to get this video remade though, certainly a big project but one that I wanted to do properly. In general if you are looking to jump into the 3D printing space then Elegoo is considered a really quite popular brand, used by lots of wargaming hobbyists, and it's considered really quite a safe place to start, there are several other good brands out there as well of course so feel free to do a bit of your own research there. I thought for this section I'd just talk through a few of the most common options for jumping into the 3D printing space from a wargaming perspective. As per usual, I do have my referral link down in the video description, 
anyone picking up 3D printers via the link down there does help support the channel a little bit as well. So feel free to use that if you'd like to, it doesn't cost any more to use. Just to quickly run through perhaps the most obvious options for entry points to 3D printing is the Mars 4 Pro 9K printer, 220 US dollars. This one's really quite detailed but slightly smaller on the 3D printer side of things. Really quite good if you just wanted to enter the space and have a play around. The build volume is a bit smaller at say 15cm by 8 by 18 And while it's kind of great for printing either small batches of models or individual character miniatures, bigger squads or vehicles and things might need to be printed in multiple different batches or chunks, which is definitely doable to be fair. The level of detail and precision on these entry level models really has gone up a lot over the last few years. They were on 4K ones not so very long ago. Otherwise, maybe for a bit more of a general purpose, slightly bigger one, there's the Saturn 3 12K one. That one's 340 US dollars. A similar sort of XY resolution, but basically a much bigger build volume. 21 by 12 by 25 is pretty good for much bigger miniatures, able to do a real bit of miniature factory production. I consider this one a nice budget mid-level option, which I think is really quite an excellent way to get into the space if you do want to crank out entire armies. The price on this particular model has come down a fair bit since I last checked in on it. The new one which Elegu sent me is the Saturn IV Ultra. This one's the latest design and is currently on pre-order. The price I think is $400 to $430 depending slightly on location. So maybe isn't really all that much more than the Saturn III. If you do want one with a few more bells and whistles and the latest tech. Again really good XY resolution, kind of similar to the 12K. The main selling points of this one compared with the last are a few different extras. A camera monitor feature to try and detect and alert for failures, and also a levelling system, a tilt release to get the designs off the build plate a bit easier, and a slightly faster printing mode. Overall just a bit of a refinement on the previous designs. This one doesn't come with a heater or air filter, so I bear that in mind. Finally, while the resin 3D printers are the ones that you normally want for high resolution miniatures that we're going to focus on today, I bear in mind FDM is also an option and can be the right choice for things like certain terrain pieces and similar. Things where a few layer lines isn't really the end of the world. The Neptune 4s may be a good example of that. Around $230 and again quite a massive build volume so you can get some fairly big terrain pieces done all at once. The link's down in the video description if you'd like to check any of those out. Though as always I've mentioned my normal caveats for 3D printing. If you're completely new bear in mind you need to handle resin with care. Set it up in a well ventilated room that you're not going to be breathing in the fumes all day. Dispose of any alcohol or water used for washing resin safely and appropriately, and just generally stay safe. Other minor disadvantages are that it can take time and troubleshooting to get established. Some people have far more trouble than others, but some have absolutely no problems. And I would just bear in mind that 3D printed models might not always be appropriate. Absolutely fine for just games and garages with friends and things like that, and plenty of third party stores are fairly friendly to them, but obviously won't be allowed in certain venues controlled by any one miniature company. I say it's not for everyone, but lots of people enjoy having their own personal little miniature factory. In any case though, with intros and sponsors out of the way, let's take a look at some cool miniatures. First up, we have some Battle Sisters by Dakadaka.store. Some fun designs for some holy nuns in space. We've got some jetpack equipped ones with the left, where I quite like the stylized wings there. They're equipped with some pistols, and I quite like the stylized helm of the one on the right. For a character choice, we've got the Archangel Elizabeth here on the right. It looks like she's not bothering with jump packs or anything like that. Seems to have some quite literal wings sprouting from her back there as best I can tell. As with quite a lot of the miniatures featured in this video, there's a few different ways that you can find them. I've tried to list a few of the ones that I just found in passing up here on the top right. My mini factory seems to be quite a staple for most of these creators. Maybe one of the easiest ways if you just want to get your hands on certain designs. And most of them also have their own subscription Patreon pages as well. And these guys have their own website. For a few other sculpts, we've got a character on a hover pulpit here, flanked by a couple of sinister guards and a quite cool staff with a sort of fleur de lis type logo being the tip of that there. That's pretty fun. And some helmeted warrior sisters named the Knights of the Crescent. Perhaps some slightly more classical plated armour there. I quite like the shield designs for those. They look quite sleek. Otherwise, we've got some warrior sisters with various different equipment. These are some with some heavy weapons here. And a bit of a battle mech character with a commander in an exosuit. Equipped with a sort of great big hellbow thing there. I feel like these ones do seem really quite sleek and polished compared with the average 3D prints out there. Really quite a snazzy example in my opinion. Next up we've got a range called Dark Machinist by Dork Factory Miniatures. Again found on my mini factory as well as other places. 
They've got a good amount of sinister twisted technology going on here. On the left we have some stalker tanks, different design for sort of little crab walker tanks there. I do quite like the little forward facing sampling claws and a few choices of weapons and things as you can see here. That's not very technologically enhanced commander for the force with the excellent name in St. Mechachungus. Absolute props for that one. Then for some rank and file, we've got some close combat specialists with some android agents there. They sort of slightly give me some Terminator vibes there. I'd almost feel like their central chest pieces look like part of a vehicle, if anything. And then they've got some tracked mini tanks there called reliquary tanks, each one packing a little shrine with some claws to either side, and a big centrally mounted techno gun of some sort. Again, looking quite modular with a whole bunch of different designs to represent different things. Maybe it could be handy enough as alternatives for certain expensive armies out there. Next up are a couple of vehicles by Across the Realms from their pinup core range. As you might be able to tell from the range, it also features really quite a few slightly less safer work miniatures there. I'll leave that to you guys to investigate if you'd like. Though I guess the all-female nature of the regiment is a little bit less obvious when you're fighting inside an armoured vehicle. In any case, a nice quad missile launcher tank there, the Cerberus with multiple missiles. Looks like that tank chassis has really quite a lot of different modular bits that you can add on to it to represent different vehicles like that. And then a big central battle tank on the right here. This one named the Queen Tiger and could be an alternative for other big battle tanks of various different game systems. I wonder if this one comes with a base plate on the underside or not. Next up, I thought I'd give a shout out to a previous channel sponsor in Grey Tide Studios. Rather than entire miniatures, these guys are more sort of aesthetic parts that could be compatible with other miniatures. Say for example, they've chosen to combine them with some space marines made by a company called Games Workshop, who I have featured on the channel once or twice before. They've got quite a good selection of themed heads here. I do like the all very knightly but in space look. A few hooded helmets and one guy with his visor up, which looks kind of cool I think. I think the one with the Maltese cross emblazoned across the same helmet looks kind of fun as well. Otherwise, it's not just heads, they've got a fair few things like shoulder pads and weapons and shields for them. I do quite like the shield options, always quite nice to be able to sub out other shields on different miniatures to add a bit more theme there. Really quite nice to have some alternative parts to add more flavour to any sub factions of certain armies. I did quite enjoy these armour plates that could be compatible with Games Workshop's Redemptor Dreadnought as well. They've got some fairly awesome billowing looking sensor smoke at the back, some nice chain adornments to various armour plates locking them into their Righteous Crusade, and who doesn't like a great big war mech holding a massive sword as well. Returning to Daka Daka Dot Store, an upcoming range from them is called the Legend of the Crimson Wings, all very angelic styled warriors in powered armour. There's a couple of examples here, including an elite with a melee weapon and a fancy gun, and one with a jetpack, and equipped with some fancy relic close combat weapons. I believe that this range is on their Kickstarter at the moment currently, not sure if there's any designs that are actually fully released yet. But again, they seem to have been fairly extensive in doing quite a big option for adding all sorts of flavour to other miniatures out there. I do quite like the rounded style shields with the hearts on them. Fits in well with the sort of noble warrior angel aesthetic. There's quite a few fun banners, pauldrons and different weapons that you can sub in for something with a little bit more flair. For some less enhanced, more standard humans in space, I have featured the Maker's Cult on the channel before. They've got a bunch of cool designs that you could make a bunch of different regiments with, really digging into different sort of tropes that might not be well represented by some other mini manufacturers. We've got a Valcor General on the left, and I quite like those Universal Guard Cavalry on the right. I feel like they've got quite a lot of appeal in just their simplicity and more generic styling, a nice alternative versus any miniatures that are a bit more blinged up maybe. Otherwise we've got a horse mounted general called Lord Aculius, quite fun terrain that he comes mounted on there. And I must admit I really did quite like the feudal guard abhumans, great big hulking ogre type brutes, some nice intimidating knightly helms and bearing shields and grenade launchers. Otherwise from that same feudal guard range we've got some feudal guard engineers here, sort of medieval feudal style men at armors but armed with shotguns and a few more fun heavier weapons. Feels like quite good, fun, state troop sort of things that would like to go alongside some futuristic knights. And the range does have a good complement of different armoured vehicles as well, fulfilling a few common tropes such as artillery support and air defence. Moving on to some heretical sculpts, first up we have the Dread Army by Dork Factory Miniatures. They've got some twisted elites here on the left in the Corruptive Void Commandos. They're looking well armoured and sporting just a few interesting little details like tusks, horns, a bit of rather sinister looking spiked weaponry. And they also have a modular tank set for the faction, 
a bunch of spikes and rams out the front, but then quite a modular design that you can put sponsons and turrets on with different weaponry as to your fit, equipping the thing as more of a transport tank or a gunline tank. Next up we've got an all very brutal and violent looking rage bound techno demon, a great big demonic winged entity, all covered in chains, armour plates, that seems to be a nice unholy fusion of flesh and machine here, wouldn't really be wanting to get in that guy's way. We also seem to have some jetpack equipped guys with some great big air intakes there, the advanced strike void commandos, have the choice between some claws or pistol and chainsaw type options. Then to go alongside the main battle tanks we've got some walking armour creations, the inferno bruisers again have a fair bit of modular options there, missile launchers, flails and various different bits to customise the carapace to, they're looking pretty well armoured and meaty there, and then there's some cultist chaff in some combat rabble. Again, many of those sticking with the vaguely technology augmented sort of theme to them. Lots of rather disturbing pipes connecting their heads to their torsos. I don't like to think what's going on there. Looks like they could be a nice enough horde style unit for a bunch of different armies. For some more generic and disturbing demons, we've got the demons ranged by edge miniatures. On the left, we've got a fairly terrifying greater demon. Lots of really fun details here. Spiked gauntlets and knee pads. Four armors carrying a variety of different fun weapons there. The main axe and the whip supplemented by a couple of swords down below there. I think those wings look very cool too. Beyond that we've got some slavering hell hyenas. Definitely looking like the spawn of nightmares there. They look like all skulls, fangs, spines and bad personality. Otherwise we've got some rather horrific looking demons of change. I think these low key might be some of my favourite ones for this range. They look truly warped and twisted. I feel like the addition of those fanged maws and slavering tongues and teeth maybe take them to the next level in true sort of cosmic horror sort of things. And then we've got on the right some lesser demons for all your more standard rank and file horde needs, complete with what looks like a banner maybe made out of flayed skin or something, and equipped with some spears and close combat weapons and a great big war horn. Back to Across the Realms next and we've got some sonic terminators, a certain or very betentacled Mr. Ravi on the Timeless with a bunch of screaming faces peeking out from his armour there, and then some rather hefty and chunky looking sonic terminators, equipped with some big gauntlets, really massive and detailed armour, and no doubt some very loud and soul shredding noise weapons there. For a few bigger and chunkier war mechs, Dork Factory Miniatures has the Death Striders, quite a flexible little upgrade set there with a bunch of different designs, a whole horde of medium sized war mechs on the table for really quite cheap, Looks like they do have enough designs to make them all look really quite individual and unique as well. Options for different head swaps, different armour panelling depending on the overall styling for the force that you're going for. And of course a good choice of different weapons from medium sized chainsaws to gauntlets and a few guns to be mounted on the top. Here are a few more of the designs. does strike me that you could get really quite a good sized army of these guys on the table really quite quickly and cheaply if you wanted to. Next up we've got some rather angry and brutal looking creations in the Gore Lords from Daka Daka Dot Store. These guys are all about the chain weapons, big axes and sheer incarnate rage. On the left we've got some possessed butchers, enormous armoured warriors with some slightly more bestial features there. Seems they've got a fair amount of kills already judging by the sheer amount of bones and skulls they've got draped over those backpacks. I think the mask of the one on the bottom right looks utterly creepy as well. We've got a creepy cowled headsman on the right here as well holding up the head of the last unfortunate victim and armed with a ridiculously big axe slash hammer with a big weight on the back, all ready to take some skulls there I'm sure. Otherwise we've got a nice spiked heavy tank, quite a lot of weight and mass to this one with some gatling guns front mounted here, plus some spawns and weapons and some hatches on the top. Otherwise we've got some more rank and file armoured warriors with the big axes and things, all ready to chop their opponents into tiny little pieces. Finally moving on to some more alien creations, first up I thought we'd start with Alien Hives by One Page Rules, these ones are a rather pleasing mix halfway between reptile and insect perhaps, we've got some artillery beasts on the left here, great big armoured almost like dinosaur type things, with some big spore chimneys on the back, there's a sort of scorpion like toxico rex with a bunch of tendrils out the front, plus a rather vicious looking stinging tail, almost looks a little bit lion like there. We've got some fungoid spores with which to seed the battlefield, and some whip coiled tailed ravenous beasts. I think the one in front that's screaming is really quite a cool little centerpiece miniature there. I do quite like the sense of motion with him. Finally, we've got a few seemingly sightless looking weapon beasts here with some big bio guns. 
They're miniatures that are aimed for their Grimdark Future War game, available in a few different army bundles of STLs, found on their My Mini Factory or Patreon bundles. Next up we've got some fun Scrap Goblin creations from a creator called Morkax Foundry. These are found via their Colts 3D page, and here we have some modular Goblin Scrap Tanks, and to do quite like the customization that you have on here, a bunch of different turrets that you can combine with the different holes and have different tracks on each side, you really could have quite a little armada of these all looking different. Otherwise there's a bigger and heavier battle fortress of a tank here, lots of scrap plates all welded together with heavy handed enthusiasm, it certainly feels like there's enough rivets on this thing. And then for another fun looter design there's the mega scrap tank, a massive great armoured beast of a vehicle with some high tech guns poking out the top, all sorts of goblin soldiers sighting out the enemy, commanding the turrets and being in charge of the tank overall. I like the guy leaning over and commanding with that cap there, signalling out the way. Next up we've got some futuristic elven style miniatures in the Tech Elves by Edge miniatures, found on their My Mini Factory page, Etsy and their Patreon. On the left here we've got some nice futuristic looking piratical raiders, they've got a whole bunch of high tech small arms, I quite like their spiky sort of looking helms there. A good blend between elven refinement and clearly not being the guys that you want to get on the wrong side of. For a bit of armoured support there's a heavy tank here, a bit more sleek and refined compared with the more blocky tanks of the other armies we've seen so far. I quite like there's details for a pilot as well. Otherwise we've got a piloted super suit on the rest here, a few different weapon options plus a rather cool sword and I must admit I think they've done rather well with these phantom warriors. Looks like they could have use for a few different purposes potentially, could be good as a sniper type unit, or something with jetpacks seeing as they seem to be hovering sinisterly just above the ground, swooping around to draw a bead on their foe. Otherwise they've got some fun jet bikes as well, here's an astromancer on jet bike armed with a spear, and on the right here we have a rather elite looking warp jumper, he's got some definite insectoid themes going along with him there. I like the interlocking armour plates and the sort of six blade things that he has around that backpack of his. And I think I can see eight compound eyes peeking out of that helmet. Next up we've got a few futuristic manga type suits. These ones made by a creator called Neoteric Miniatures. On the left here we've got a Ravage Combat suit. Really quite a big looking suit with a cool techie looking shield. A few missile launchers mounted on top and an enormous gun mounted under his right hand there. And then we've got some cool interlocking armour plates of an Urban Warfare Warden suit here on the right. A whole load of guns that look like they could be good for anti-infantry type purposes. And fairly awesome posing on that guy too. Otherwise we've got a fun alien sniper team in the Thralian Stalker Squad. A fun mix of some inset light aliens with some pretty interesting techie war gear there. I quite like the dynamism of this Vanguard suit on the right here. Charging into battle on a jetpack with this great big power blade. Next up, for some examples of some cool space dwarves, we've got one page rules is dwarf guilds. On the left here we've got some power suit armoured champions here. Some guys in some pretty big armour, backed up with some all very technologically advanced guns, plus some nicely geometric power axes and advanced mining pickaxes there. There's then some space dwarf berserkers, hefting some rather enormous looking axes. One looks like he's got a rather big looking grenade launcher type thing as well. I quite like the hairstyles and the bushy beards on a few of these ones as well, particularly that guy at the front with the plaited beard. Otherwise for a few more foot troops we've got a set of warriors with different heavy weapons there. There's some nice dwarves in space style futuristic armour with some heavy weapons and missile launchers. I do quite like the biker champions here. Pretty fun motorcycles with some frankly enormous back wheels there. No doubt adding a little bit of speed into the space dwarf army. Otherwise they do have some heavier armour available as well, some great big war mechs, complete with pilots and things, plus some heavy combat weapons like the enormous sword on the left here, and some big fortress tanks, very heavily armoured half track constructions mounting an enormous cannon, rumbling into battle for a bit of heavy fire support. Next up we're back to edge miniatures once more, for a few more examples of space elves, we've got some cursed elves here, who are all looking rather less friendly. There's a big scary raiding skiff sort of jet bike construction in the raiding shuttles here on the left. One pilot and one gunner. There's a collector miniature with all sorts of horrendous sort of bio horror things going on there. A nice scorpion tail and I think that that arm just hanging off it at the sort of front left of the construction. It really adds to the just sheer horrendousness of the whole model. Otherwise we've got some winged sky raiders. Maybe feels a little bit of overlap between those 
Tech Elf piratical raiders that we saw before, some pure blood elites, hefting some really quite big scary close combat weapons and looking all a bit demonic in form there, and some more twisted flesh creations in these monstrosities, disturbing faceless slitted grills and limbs replaced by some heavy weapons. Finally, for some space robots, we've got the Robots Legions by One Page Rules, again found on their My Mini Factory and their own website. For some elite troopers, these Eternals on the left are all rather nice, energy weapons, and I quite like their sort of curved style helms, maybe just reminds me a little bit of maybe General Grievous from Star Wars type thing. On the right, we have a great big technological construct called a Forge Spider, eight legs there and a little bit of firepower tucked beneath its surface. Then for a bit of heavy fire support, there's a heavy annihilator model here, a four-legged walker construction with a much heavier energy weapon style gun, and I must admit one of the centerpiece models called the Great Wraith is kind of spectacular. A great big robot deity of a model there, sporting no less than eight arms as best I can count there. Looks like a really cool centerpiece model, maybe can't help but think that might be a bit of a nightmare to transport though with all that cast in slightly fragile resin. It really does look kind of spectacular and a bit of a showstopper though. In any case, loads of cool miniature designs, I'll leave just one link to each creator down in the video description so you could check them out yourselves, but it's easy enough just to give them a search and find the designs where you need to. As I said, a massive thank you for Elegoo for sponsoring the video. If you are looking to get a 3D printer and get into 3D printing for wargaming, they're a pretty great place to start. I'd probably be most tempted by the Saturn 3 or the Mars 1 if it were me, although you certainly can upgrade to the more fancy, more recent Saturn design. Check out the link in the video description if you'd like to check them out. As said, any sales through that do go to help support all specs tactics a little bit, if you were picking something up anyway. In any case, looking forward to hearing your ideas on core miniature designs. Let me know which of these are your favourites or are particularly standout. Hopefully it could be a topic to come back to at some point in the future. If you enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics. I'm sure we'll return to 3D printing at some point in the future, but otherwise I tend to more focus on Warhammer 40k sort of videos, with new ones out just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page as well. You can find that linked in the video description, and it is the main reason that I can keep all these videos coming quite so regularly. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, an absolutely enormous thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.